Hey everyone, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show you how to make a gift bag envelope for my new 3D display card. So in here, it's a very special card. It can also be a gift as well. So you can pop a little gift in the box underneath or seal it off. This one's completely sealed off, but you can see this beautiful card, display card. You've got your space on the back there to write your message. And I wanted a way to present this. And I think your envelopes and your packaging should be just as special, especially if you've taken time to make such a beautiful card like this. So I've made this gift bag here. I've made it so that it will fit. I think the width of this is seven and a half. You shouldn't go any wider than that if you're using the, you know, the dies for this. And it's by nine and a quarter. So any height that you might add to it, like I've started to build up around the frame there. But if you did go a bit higher here, then you've got that space to do so. But I think then they've got a nice way to keep this safe, you know, and if they do store them then away and they like to keep all of their cards and that's going to keep it safe. You don't have to have the aperture on the front. You could just have plain pattern paper if you want. And it's just a nice gift bag on its own as well. So let me show you how I made it. So to make the gift bag, you want two pieces of eight by, this is A4 length, so it's about 11 and three quarters. But if you've got 11, then that's fine. And if you're using 12 inch card, you can you know use that as well. If you've got 12 inch card, then you can actually have this all attached. So you have one piece that's 10 and a half. But this is deconstructed just so that those people that have smaller card sizes can make it. So if you do have your 12 inch, then cut it to 10 and a half by 12 that will be fine and along the 10 and a half side you're going to score at seven and a half and ten okay I'll give you the other measurement in a minute but for those that are cutting it down like me here this is a piece of eight like I said by eleven and three quarters a four letter size whatever score at seven and a half okay and then rotate it so that that is along the bottom and score at two and a half so again if you've got your 12 inch piece just rotate it the way I have and just score at two and a half You'll do that, you need two pieces if you've got your 12 by 12 paper. Again, you need two pieces of this and then you'll need two of these if you're breaking it down again like me. These here are three by again the same length, whatever it is you've got and you're going to score it two and a half. Do that twice and then again rotate so that score lines at the bottom and score it two and a half and do that on both pieces. Next, I've already stuck this one on the top. Now, another reason why it's also good to use the smaller cardstock size is if you've got a large die cutter machine, you can run this through your die machine. If you don't have a die machine, you can cut this center bit by hand. So you can just lay your die down and draw around the middle, whatever frame, whatever size, whatever it is you're doing. You might not be adding an aperture. You might just keep the bag just as it is and just add some nice pattern paper. But if you've got this frame as an example, but you don't have a large die cutting machine, just draw a pencil line around here and then cut it freehand. I'm going to cut this completely out and then I'm going to cut the frame again in gold and I'm going to put acetate behind it. OK, so that's all cut. And I've also cut another frame because I'm going to be paper piecing it back together again like this. But next, I want to add some uh, acetate to the back. So I'm just going to take some tape here and just run it around close to the frame there. You could add it to the acetate first as well if you want. I'm just going to do this way. And then I've got a piece of acetate here. I'm just going to sit that right over the top and just give it a good burnish and you'll see the tape darken in colour. That means it's adhered to the cardstock. You can see how darker that is to this side here. Trim off any excess if you've done it like me. I just wanted to make sure that the tape was really close to the inner circle so that this doesn't dip when I stick it on top. So that's going to stick in there perfectly. So I'm just going to add my tape around here. And then you'll feel it lock itself back into its shape there. There we go. It should now line up. I think I forgot to say actually that I, the way I got that in its place, I've just talked you through it now. I sat this inside and had it sitting on the bottom. So just fold that up there. And then I just placed the die down and cut it out. So it's roughly where that's going to now sit. So that's what you'll see 
I think it looks so fun. So next we can start putting this together. So fold and burnish all of the score lines. Okay, so with the two larger ones, you just want to snip away the little rectangle that you'll have down in the corner. So just cut all the way up, just to the first score line, and then just snip away the edge there and just take a little wedge off of each corner so you've got your tab. Do the same on this one. And then you're going to do the same on these two as well. So just take away that little... corner piece but with these ones what you also want to do is just cut a wedge off of the sides there a little bit off the top there as well you just by doing this it just means you won't get any bits sticking out the bottom of the, the base when you fold it all in okay and then what we'll also do is just do the same on the back piece so this one here, just take a little wedge off of each side. Don't need to measure it or anything. So now we can stick down all of this so it all becomes one long piece. So we're going to stick that one on there. We're going to stick that one on there and then that one on there. Okay, when you've stuck them all together, flip it over and fold this side down. Make sure everything runs nice and parallel with each other and all the score lines all line up. And then what I'm probably going to do with this one is add some tape, purely because I've got the acetate. Although saying that, actually I did say you could trim this away. Let's just trim along that side there. So you're not really going to see inside here, I guess, just so they're not like... You know, going to catch and just take those corners off. There we go. And then I can just add my glue again all down. And then just fold that and it should all line up. And just give that all a minute to dry. Okay, then what you want to do, I've got the front face of me, just turn it upside down and fold that towards you. I'm then going to fold the base down and I'm going to use my construction glue because this is going to make the base nice and strong. So if you are adding a gift inside the card, if you've just got maybe lots of weight to it, you've turned it into a shaker, lights, all that kind of stuff, then if you use a construction glue, it's just going to hold it and it will last as well. And then just fold in the sides and then I'm just going to add my glue all on the front and because you've not cut anything away from this piece when you go to stick it on the top it will just form a nice neat base to your gift bag like so and then just flip it over and I'll use my ruler here and you can just go in and just spread that all out it sits perfectly or as good as in the middle there and I'm actually going to keep it there whilst I do some more decoration and then I'm going to add my handles. So I had all these pieces left over from when I made the card and I thought they'd be perfect for the gift bag. Now I'm thinking I'm just going to use eyelets on here and then just have a nice ribbon handle. So we'll do that in a moment. I mean if you want to have a gift tag I think the bottle itself would work nicely as a gift tag. You could have that just hanging but I think I'm going to just stick a couple more these are different colours actually that doesn't matter I might cut a few in cream and I'm tempted to maybe have a little sentiment along the bottom there as well but I think maybe just one there on the front and then maybe have the just a few little elements there I think that would look quite nice but I definitely think I need to have a little sentiment along the bottom there.
So I've stuck everything down on the front. I think it looks really cool. And then what I'm doing with the ribbon, so I want to have a bow on the front, but it also be the handle. So I've just got this long piece of ribbon. I'm just threading it through all the way around. And then I'm coming back round through the front. For me, it's the front left that I'm going to have the bow. Like so. so you want to get your handle height at the back. So I think that's about where I want it. And then I want to have the same at the front. And then I'm just going to pinch together here. So you can see I've got my handle there. Pinching the two together there. And that's where I'm going to make my bow. Okay, and there's the finished gift bag. I thought the stripy ribbon works really well with the golds and the greens and the blacks. And then to open it and just, you know, pull it that side so they can get the card out. And like I said, you might have a gift in there as well, in the box at the bottom. And you've got your space on the back to write your message there as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of envelope gift bag for the 3D display cards. I think it's a really fun way. And like I always say, you're putting all that effort and time into these special cards. I think a beautiful gift bag to present it in is needed. So as always, I will link all of the product that I've used in the description box below and I'll be back again very soon. Take care. Bye.